Today, we're looking at a sweet dual camera from Amcrest. It is panoramic, 4K, 8 megapixel camera. On the bottom, you can see there's two screws holding the cover for the micro SD card. We won't be using that. We'll be connecting this directly to an NVR. Here's the size comparison to a regular D size battery, D for David. So yeah, this thing is relatively chunky because it has two cameras combined into one. In the box, here are all of these features. There's AI, there's night color. Night color thanks to the uh, LED spotlights. Inside the box, this is all you would get. There's the uh, Cat5 cable somewhere in here that I toss away because I don't want to use. It's really small, it's like uh, 4 feet. Screws and anchors. And of course, the waterproof Ethernet adapter. Oh, I also forget, there's the uh, mounting guy as well to know where to drill the holes into the wall or ceiling. And here's the camera one more time before we start looking at the software. Size-wise, it is 7 inches long, 4 inches wide, and 3 inches high. Now, let's go ahead and power up the camera. Right now, it is not directly connected to any Amcrest NVR. I'm just going to use a power injector to inject the PoE signal into it and get this thing onto my network. Go ahead and open up your router, log into your router, and find out what is the IP address of this camera on your network, assuming that you plug it into your network like I am right now. Myself, I'm using PFSense, so all I have to do is go to the status, go down to DHCP leases, and there we go, this is the camera itself, and here is the IP address. The host name starts with AMC something something something. Now that we know what the IP address is, let's go ahead and open up a browser and log into it. The best way to do that is go ahead and open up your Edge browser, type in the address. For me, it's 192.168.1.27, as you saw earlier in the router setting. Choose your region, language, and click on Next. Set up the time, click on Next. Enter the new password and confirm the password one more time. Feel free to set up the questions and the answers just in case you forget the password. And then click on Next. If you want to enable to view this camera anywhere in the world, go ahead and check the box for P2P and then click on Next. And now you're all set and done. Click on Finish. If you want, go ahead and check it out by logging it in again. Enter your username, which is admin. Password is the password that you set it up. And then click on Login. Once you log in, you should see a panoramic view of what the camera is seeing. Right now, we're in my office, a very messy office. You can clearly see how it's being powered up. There's the Cat5 going into the PoE injector, and the other Cat5 is going into my switch to jump onto my local network. Let's click on the gear icon, and then go down to storage. There's three types of storage. There's the local, FCP, and NAS. If you want all of the files, go to the NAS. Go ahead and set up your settings here. I won't be doing that since this will be recorded straight to the Blue Iris. Local storage is for your micro SD card, which we're not doing as well. Let's click on the home icon. And here you can see additional settings. Let's click on AI to see what's there. In Smart Plan, click on Next. It's interesting that I can't do any of these settings. I can only do heat map or IVS or smart object detection. Face detection is not available for me to check. It's very weird. I'm going to do another in-depth video to explain everything, but for now we're just doing a quick overview of this whole thing. Click on Next. Let's add a rule. You can do tripwire or intrusion. So let's play around with the tripwire for now. Tripwire is when somebody is stepping over the line and then this camera will send an alert. For now we're targeting human and motor vehicle. If this ever gets triggered, it can turn on the siren or the warning lights that's already on the front of the camera itself. I can tell you right now the siren is extremely loud and annoying. For demonstration purposes, we're just going to do warning lights and then click on next. Oops, before we do the uh, next, let's draw the digital trip wire. On the screen, go ahead and draw the line and then adjust accordingly. Click on next when you're done. All right, now we're back onto the live menu. On the upper right hand corners, there's additional icons that you can play around with, such as the warning lights. Click on that to turn on and off the lights. There's the siren itself. I play around with it and it was crazy loud. There's the digital zoom. 
Snapshot will let you take a single photo and save it onto your desktop or laptop. Triple snapshot is the same idea, taking three simultaneous photos at the same time. Record control, you can record and save directly to your uh, desktop or laptop. Oh yeah, did I tell you this thing has a built-in microphone as well as speaker? That way you can listen in as well as talk and somebody on the other end will hear it. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my headphone and hear what's going on. Yeah, it sounds pretty good. All right, this is it, demo time. You can see the camera clearly identify my son walking around. The way I drew the trip wire is all messed up, so that's why you can ignore the uh, trip wire for now. As soon as the trip wire has been crossed, the lights turn on and blinking. It also identify him correctly. You have to understand this thing is ultra wide, panoramic. That means as soon as you cross this line right here, you will be caught on camera, no doubt. True 180 degree point of view. Now, because this is an OnVIF camera with RTSP, you can certainly use any program like VLC to view on your laptop or desktop. So when you open VLC up, go ahead and hit Control N, or you can use the menu, go to Media, and then go down to Open Network Stream. The RTSP format will be RTSP colon slash slash admin colon your password at the IP address. In this case, it's 192.168.1.27 colon 554. And then click on play. We're back to my office and this time it's on the floor. If you do control I on VLC, you'll see the media codec. The resolution is 4096 by 1825, so it's not really true 4K, but it's pretty close enough, right? I don't know, it sounds misleading based on the description. When I say dual lens 4K, I would assume that each lens is 4K itself for a total of 8K. The beauty of having a OnVIF camera is that this thing does not have to be connected directly to the back of the NVR unit itself. As mentioned earlier, this camera right now is not connected to the back of the NVR. It's connected to a network that's far, far away from a NVR itself. And here's the process on how to link that camera to an NVR. Specifically, this is an NVR from Amcrest, but I would imagine any OnVIF NVR will work. So I'm going to go ahead and log into my Amcrest NVR and then click on Login. Go to Management, go to Camera, Add Device, we can do device search, and there we go, we found the camera. Check the box, and then go down to add. Click on the pencil icon to edit something, like the password, and then click on save. Oops, let's go back. We forgot to change the manufacturer to OnVIF. Username is the same, which is admin, and then change the password again. For whatever reason, you can see the status is red, but that's okay. Click on the pencil icon one more time, because this NVR is crazy and then click on save. Now it works. Weird, right? Now let's go back to the uh, list of cameras and then click on the cameras that you want. Here it is again. Very nice. Lastly, if you're not using any NVR and you want to control everything via your phone or tablet, go ahead and install this app right now. It's called Amcrest View Pro 2. Once it's installed, go ahead and open, click on Next because it wants storage permission. Select your region. Right now, I'm in the United States and click on Done. Go ahead and click on the plus icon. We're going to scan the QR code. And go ahead and scan the QR code that's on the camera itself. Or you can always scan the QR code that you saw earlier in the setup. There we go. This is the device serial number. Click on PoE camera because this is a PoE camera. For whatever reason, it failed again and again. I don't know why. It's so weird. That's all right. We're going to add it via IP address this time. So go ahead and enter the IP address. If you're going to do with this method, 
that there's no way you, for you to view remotely from anywhere in the world. You can only view this locally because this IP address is only local. Go ahead and enter in the device name, the username, and the device password. This is the password that you used earlier during the setup. All right, looks good. We're now back into my office. If you rotate the screen or go full screen, then this is what happens. You go into the uh, horizontal format. Here are all of the buttons that you saw earlier in my desktop. There's the quality. Let's change it from SD to HD. Now it looks so much better, right? If you want to listen in, go ahead and click on the listen icon. There's also, of course, the talk option if you want to talk. And then click on allow to allow the microphone to be used. Record icon will let you save the video directly onto your phone. Overall, I would say this is a great camera if you absolutely must need panoramic view. Instead of installing two cameras, this one single unit will handle both. There's no way you can sneak past this camera at all. It has built-in LED so you can view colors at night. It's not just no longer black and white or green and white. There's microphone and speaker. That's amazing how they squeeze everything in to one small package. All right, hopefully this video helps you on how to set up the camera. I really appreciate you guys subscribing to my channel, liking this video, and thanks for watching.